Hello viewers. So welcome to this new video and we are going to analyze a company which is in fintech space and I think in India this is one of the few companies which is a profitable company in the fintech space. So quickly speaking we will in agenda we will cover first why we are interested to study this company. Uh, we will know about the company. Uh, we will understand the business model. Uh, what kind of products this company has. Uh, we will try to understand the financials. Uh, valuation risk. So first, why we are interested in studying these company and I'm still studying this company. So I'm presenting at the same time. I'm studying it. I still have a lot of open questions, but I thought this is an interesting one to just share. Uh, and sharing means uh, we can get more and more questions around it. So it helps us to brainstorm more. So why we got interested in this company, a simple reason where if we look at all the numbers, the numbers are telling uh, some real growth which is happening. I will come to the definition of this word called throughput, but consider this as a some kind of business number which has grown at 41% year over year. And if you look at the revenue EBITDA and the PAT, so the revenue has grown almost 28% year over year. The EBITDA has gone almost 62% and PAT has grown up more than 100%. Now, uh, given we had a COVID year where, you know, companies were suffering this kind of, you know, growth and a pat growth of almost four times revenue, it does highlight that uh, there is something which interesting, which might be happening in the business. And from 20 crore pat, now this business is doing 43 crore pat. Also, there are a lot of operational numbers and, you know, the company, the company name is Fino because this word is a transaction on Fino platform. So if you look all the operational formation, 55%, 40%, 59%. So all the operational financial information is telling that a lot of growth is happening in this company and it's a profitable company growing at a high rate. And if you look at the profit margin, two years back, the company used to operate at minus 4.6% profit margin. And this company came up with an IPO last year. And when it came, the margin was 2.6%. And now this year, the company has closed uh, the March result with 4.2% PAT margin. And uh, given all these numbers look very interesting, uh, we thought why not to study this company? Because even when you look at the trajectory of the revenue quarter after quarter, so this line is FY19, then 20, then 21. And you can see every quarter revenue is higher than the previous quarter. And of course, there is a year over year growth rate happening. And in terms of profitability also, uh, we can see that the profit is also increasing at a very good pace quarter over quarter from 3 crore to 8 crore to 14 crore to almost 18 crore. So because of all these reasons, we felt it's worth studying this company. So let us know more about what is uh, Fino Payment Bank all about. So Fino, it's a payment bank. So let us first understand what is a payment bank. So there are different kinds of banks uh, in India. Uh, the categorization is done by RBI. And in the last five years, uh, RBI has come with two more types of banks, small finance bank and payment banks. So uh, all these new categories of bank have been created to improve the financial inclusion in India, to bring more and more people who don't have banking facility to get under the purview of banking. And each of these bank types, they do have certain kind of limitation and all. So like this payment bank, if we see there are a lot of, uh, you know, uh, a lot of constraints like uh, in terms of how many branches or how many points should be there for rural area and all. Uh, but RBI, I think in 2016 or 17, they granted license to 11 players for payment bank license. And Fino Payment Bank was one of them. The other prominent being uh, Airtel Payment Bank or Paytm or Indian Post. Now there are certain uh, restrictions by RBI, first and most important. A uh, payment bank cannot do a lending activity, which means it will not give loan, which means you will not see NPAs and those kind of business models. So it's very, very different from a typical bank, which does lending. And uh, also they need to come up with IPO and a lot of other conditions, but key is they cannot lend. So they have to provide banking facility, but without lending. And we will see how a payment bank or how a Fino payment bank is providing all of this. So important thing to notice PNL is not like a bank, but it is like any other company uh, because there are no loans, there are no NPAs. 
So Fino Payment Bank, it offers banking and payment services like any other regular bank. However, they don't lend themselves. But what they do is they can uh, they can uh, partner with other banks or NBFCs and they can help to you know bring the customer and the lender together or they provide the customer all the banking facilities in terms of transaction facility, remittance facility, uh, CASA account facility and all of that. And how Fino Payment Bank is doing it. So it's a differentiated model where it's a merchant based model and through the merchants, uh, they try to provide banking facility and we will see more of that. And uh, Fino Payment uh, provides multiple products as a part of banking facility and we'll see more of that so how fino does it so think about a kirana store which is there uh you know near our house and there is a person who will be sitting at this kirana store who will be selling a lot of uh, you know groceries so in small towns uh these guys they're very close to the customer who are there and what happens as part of you know payment model this merchant it onboards on the Fino platform and you can say that he becomes banker for Fino bank and any customer who is coming to Kirana store because there is no banking facility available in that area. This person starts providing the banking facilities, whether it is related to a CASA account opening or it's related to, you know, uh, withdrawing cash or is, is it related to remittance or is it related to loan facilities? And uh, when the IPO came, Fino had 6 lakh merchants. Now Fino has almost 10 lakh merchants. And then on the other side, we have customers who come for various needs related to all of this. And they come because in their area, not much of banking facility is available. Also, Fino does it through a tech model where there is a dedicated app. And actually, there is one app for the merchant and there is one app for the customers. So. If customers can use the app on their own, they can do it directly. But if they don't know how to use it, they can come to this merchant who is the nearby Kirana shop, uh, you know, owner. And he, uh, through the app, he helps uh, customers to get the banking facilities. So this is how it works. And uh, this company was co-founded by Mr. Rishi Gupta. And actually, there are a lot of uh, leadership team which has come from ICICI. In fact, Mr. Rishi Gupta also used to work in ICICI. Uh, this whole concept originated from ICICI and uh, they worked as a BC partner for a long time, you know, helping with the Aadhaar implementation and all. And from there, slowly they grew and uh, they got a banking license, payment bank license, and that is how they have progressed. Uh, also, uh, uh, if we look at uh, the senior management, there are a lot of people who have come from the ICIC background. But given the company is new, one year company, hardly two, three conference calls have happened. Uh, we don't have a lot to see about the management, but uh, uh, this is the key team. And recently, one more person has joined as chief digital officer who has come from IDFC Bank. So given now we understand what is payment bank, what Fino does, let us jump to the business model of Fino, how Fino's business model works. So first thing, what is the market in which Fino operates? And if we see the market uh, in India, on one side, we have top of the pyramid, basically the you know high earning people like more than 50, 60,000 salary per month salary people uh, who reside in urban area or tired to cities where you know you, they have the access to MNC banks, private and PSU banks. And then at the bottom, we have bottom of the pyramid, which, uh, you know, uh, which is like, uh, uh, you know, below 10,000 salary, you can say, and uh, these are economically the worst of the strata. And then in the middle, you have emerging India, which is a rural focused market, your typical tier three, tier four towns where people, somebody earning between 10,000 to 40,000 rupee per month. So this is the segment which Fino caters to. So it is very important to understand uh, you know, how Fino, uh, you know, targets its customer segment so that it avoids competition. And uh, if we look at this segment, there is enough need for banking in terms of the ATM penetration or commercial banking penetration and all. So this is the segment in which Fino operates and there are other payment banks also. Some compete with Fino and some operate in this particular, uh, you know, pyramid. And how it works is so any customer who doesn't have a banking facility, he comes to the merchant, local merchant, and through that merchant, he enters into Fino ecosystem. 
and then he gets access to various financial services uh, even if he doesn't have a banking account they can open a banking account they can do remittance remittance is basically sending money or they can withdraw money uh, you know there is a concept of micro atm which is a very very cheaper version of a full fledged atm or there is a aeps where even if somebody doesn't uh, you know have a card through you know aadhar system they get the money then they can open their casa account and deposit so through this channel uh, you know banking facilities financial uh, transaction facilities saving account facilities deposit facilities money withdrawal money transfer emi collection cross sell of products like lending products insurance products all of this happen and everything happens through a technology layer without a bank branch but through a merchant who becomes you know banker so this is how the typical customer journey evolves in you know uh, landscape and if we look at the products there are certain products which are part of physical ecosystem and certain which are part of digital ecosystem so uh, anything which requires like a physical interface like a micro atm or aadhar enabled you know uh, money withdrawal uh, these products are there then there are certain products which fino targets not to b2c but it's more b2b so like lot of nbfcs are there lot of uh, you know microfinance companies are there and they need to collect the money that cash needs to be managed so fino manages all that cash so this is more a b2b business and then they have the customer deposit and all which they manage through casa and debit cards and then they have a digital ecosystem where anything related to online payment or selling of loans or deposits or mutual funds a lot of this happens here so these are the bouquet of services which you know provides and if you see the merchant now you know the merchants they act as a banker and it's a win win because whenever a transaction is done so let's say a merchant is doing a transaction for the customer either in terms of money withdrawal or in terms of uh, you know remittance a part of that transaction goes to the merchant so apart from running his grocery shop he is also earning a side income through fino and a part of it goes to fino so there is a win win there is a profitability aspect for the merchant uh, the customer is getting the banking facility and fino is also earning money through the transaction charge and then there is a revenue model which is either a a transaction based model or a subscription based model so your casa and debit card they are subscription based model where anybody who is opening a deposit or casa account he needs to pay a annual fee uh, which goes as a subscription fee or if they are doing any kind of transaction like remittance or renewal or withdrawal and all so a part of that money goes as transaction fee which is the transaction revenue model but all the fino product offerings they have some kind of revenue model and it provides convenience to the customer because they get banking facility from somebody trusted with whom you know they transact in day to day life plus there is a digital platform where there is a app and if the customers instead of dealing through the merchant if they want to access directly banking facility let's say if they have already opened a casa account so they can go and they can directly access the digital platform the app and through that also they can get all the banking facilities and if we look at the product so fino got a payment license and then in last four years they have scaled up so that traditional products were more around uh, you know bc banking remittance and then they have kept on increasing the products like micro atm and aeps got introduced then casa and debit cards got introduced saving accounts got introduced and now lot of third party cross sell and upsell products so this whole fino app or uh, model either the merchant app or the consumer app that app is like a technology platform on which all the financial products are being sold so this is how we are calling it fintech and uh, these are the various products if you see so remittance is one of the oldest product which is basically for you know sending money and fino charges a commission out of the total transaction value and it operates through its own as well as you know other api channels so basically it's a money transaction and which is transaction based and uh, micro atm and aps uh, these are basically uh you can say it's a micro atm services so the cost of running a atm is very high and that is why if we we'll, I, i will show you the data uh in very uh, you know rural areas atms are not that easily available 
So this is something which can be provided at a very cheaper cost. And here they earn money through two sources. So merchant sign up fee, whenever some merchant wants to join Fino network, they get a sign up fee. And then whenever customer does a cash withdrawal, then they get a transaction fee. So this is both subscription based as well as, uh, you know, transaction based. Uh, then you have a cash management facility, which is more B2B where they manage cash, cash for a lot of industries like e-commerce, NBFCs and all. And then all the third party cross sell happens where Fino is tied up with a lot of financial institutions, insurance companies, and their products are being sold through Fino. And then CASA is basically your basic banking of uh, providing the banking facility through debit card, CASA account and all. And then you have the BC banking, which is the traditional Fino model where, you know, basically they assist the banks in getting their KYCs and all the other facilities and they charge certain amount. Uh, as a part of onboarding fee. So these are the products and remittance and BC is uh, banking is something which Pino has been doing for a long time. And then these products have got added and as a part of part of third party cross sell, they keep adding products. And how Fino executes it. So it's a technology distribution and partnership driven model. So distribution means think like a FMCG company, which needs to go and penetrate all those small retail Kirana shops. So here, uh, these Kirana shop merchants, they become the distributor of, you know, banking, you know, platform. So the higher the merchant network, the more the customer they can tap and the more they can sell and transact and they can generate. And all these distribution model with customer and merchant, they need to transact through a technology layer where either they have a merchant app or a customer app, which is the technology. And to provide all these banking and facilities, Pino does partnership with a lot of financial institutions in terms of bank, financial institutes, e-commerce firm for cash management system and all. And they try to build a bouquet of products and they sell. So this is a, you know, three, uh, you can say these are the three pillars through which Fino executes the overall business. And these are the two apps. One app is a consumer app. One app is a merchant app. You can see a lot of downloads have happened. The rating also looks decent above four. So uh, given now you understand uh, payment bank, what Fino does, how they do, do what is the target segment, uh, you know, uh, what are the products they offer, how they offer these products, how, what is the operating model. Let's get into detail of these products. And before we get into detail, we need to understand few basic concepts. So first concept is throughput. You will see this data throughout the Fino deck and presentation. So basically any amount of money value, which is being transacted, that is throughput. So if people are coming and withdrawing money through micro ATM and they've withdrawn one lakh rupee. So this one lakh rupee becomes the throughput. So this thousand rupee withdrawn is the throughput. And then take rate is basically the fee which the Fino is charging out of throughput. So if there is a thousand rupee transaction and Fino is charging 10 rupee, then 10 divided by thousand rupee, that becomes the take rate. So basically all this money being collected through this take rate goes into Fino's revenue source. And this is what is the operation. So think like you have, you know, many of us, we have used book my show. So we book a ticket for thousand rupee. And then from that thousand rupee book, my show charges 30 rupee. And that 30 rupee will go at book my show revenue. So that thousand rupees, the throughput and 30 rupees, the revenue. So higher the throughput, more the chances of take rate and the revenue. And this throughput can come from a remittance. It can come from micro ATM. It can come from other transaction sources and all. So uh, now let us look at each of the product offering. So first is remittance where, you know, the customer comes to the merchant and merchant already has an account with Fino bank and merchant helps the customer uh, by uh, in remitting, which is uh, transferring the money by crediting the money in the beneficiary account. And then there is a percentage of transaction charge from the customer and that percentage of transaction is the take rate. And then a part of money from that take rate goes to the merchant and uh, remaining money goes to Fino. So this is how everybody gets benefited. So customer pays the cash to the merchant for transfer of beneficiary account. Uh, and then the merchant receives cash from the customer. He deposits in his own drawer and then he tra then transfer it to respective beneficiary account. And this is how the whole remittance happens. 
And if we look at the throughput of this, so you can see the throughput is the total money value and we have eight quarter data and you can see how it has gone from, you know, 3,500 crore to 7,500 crore to almost 12,000 crore right now. And a part of this, so maybe, uh, you know, a take rate, if you look at the take rate, so 0 0.87, 0 0.86% is the take rate. So out of 12,000 crore, 0.86% of 12,000 crore will go to the Fino, which comes somewhere around you know, 100, 105 crore. And then this money is remitted through two sources, either through Fino's own API or through other open APIs. And most of the money is being remitted through open bank channels. From Fino's channel, only 20, 15% of the money is being transacted and this is decreasing. And actually open banking margin is lower and Fino's own channel margin is higher, but this is a highly competitive game. So Fino is open to, you know, do it through open channel and this is how they earn. And if we look at the historical data, so this uh, thing has not grown. And one particular reason, if you remember in India, who does remittance, basically it is uh, people who have migrated from their own state and they go and they work in other states. So primarily people from UP, Bihar, Orissa, those kind of reason who have a region who have shifted and they want to transfer money to the family. So when COVID happened, you know, a lot of these people, they migrated to their hometown. So that is why you see a big dip in the transaction income for, you know, from 350 crore to 250 crore. And again, with the economy opening, it has gone back, but the growth uh, year over year growth was 30, you know, 38%, but overall growth, if you see this growth has not happened. Uh, and uh, want to be a do it yourself investor or Trader, are you interested in data-driven concepts and strategies for wealth creation, leveraging fundamental or technical analysis? Learn business, financial, management, valuation and fraud analysis for wealth creation. Learn chart analysis, price volume action, technical indicators and risk management for both trading and investing. Learn systematic investing and trading with full automation using algorithms from scratch. 120 hours of recorded video content across eight courses, four learning tracks and two memberships. You also get a lot of screeners, checklists, dashboards and tools for efficient analysis. So far, we have covered 25 plus companies, five plus sectors, 300 plus charts, four unique trading and investing strategies. And we keep adding minimum five to six hours of relevant content every month. As part of practitioner membership, you get to attend regular webinars and meetups and also access to our newsletters on markets across range of topics. We cover fundamentals, technical, quants, and Technofunda skills through various courses, bundles and learning tracks available through annual and lifetime memberships. Learn from credible minds with rich experience in finance, stock markets, and data science. Explore our courses, learning tracks, and memberships on our app Scientific Investing and our website learn.scientificinvesting in for more information. For any queries, write to info at the rate scientific investing dot in. Uh, just ignore these two numbers. And if we look at the take rate, which is how much Fino gets, so 255 crore out of 29,000 crore. So uh, Fino's take rate has been around 0 0.87%, 0 0.86%. But if you see through open bank, bulk of the transaction is happening, uh, which is almost 80%. And the margins are uh, very low in the open banking. So Fino margins are almost six times, but uh, through Fino's channel, very less amount of uh, remittance is happening. And Fino has almost a 14% market share. And this remittance market is expected to grow at 12%. So why I'm giving you all this number is so that, you know, you can build everything in your own uh, Excel model. And then you can do some kind of projection that how Fino can grow in each of these product markets. And then we need to sum it up and see what is the growth and what is the pattern, what is the valuation and all. So it was one of the older products, heavy competition, uh, lower growth rate, no growth has happened in two years. And channel economics matters uh, how Fino is earning, uh, doing the remittance that will decide the margin and the profit. Next product is cash management. So basically they help in the flow of cash for uh, B2B like uh, your e-commerce companies, NBFCs and all. And here they have a cash collection agent and they collect cash, they pass the cash to the merchant 
and the merchant has account with Fino Bank, and then it gets into banking account. So this is how they are digitizing the whole cash flow. So the delivery agent or the collection agent, they visit the customer, they collect the cash, they go, they submit the cash to the merchant. The merchant puts in his own account, and then he transfer it to Fino, and then with some kind of T plus one time difference, Fino is able to pass this money to its B two B partner. And uh, one surprise you will think that okay, after demonetization, India's cash transaction, you know, cash circulation would have stopped, but it did take a dip. But if you look at the last four or five year of data, the cash in circulation has increased again from 12.6 trillion to almost 28 trillion in FY21, and now I think it's around 29 trillion, and with a decent CAGR growth rate of 12 percent. So it's not like the cash economy is gone; it is there. And if you see, this is one of the higher growing segments for Fino, where from a 2.5 crore revenue per quarter, they have gone to almost 18 crore revenue per quarter within a span of two years, with the throughput also growing at a very high rate. And if you see the take rate here is around 0.24, 0.23%. So here, if you see, there are a lot of levers by which Fino can grow. So one for how many partners Fino is managing, and they've grown from 40 partners to 131 partner. So one is you can grow by growing the number of partner. Second, for the same partner, if today you are collecting 100 rupee and tomorrow you are collecting 200 rupee, so you can grow by collecting more also from that partner. So there are a lot of levers and it's a cash economy driven business. It is a high growth business. It's a high margin business. So don't go by take rate. Basically, uh, take rate is the revenue, but how much they're spending uh, you know, to generate this income, all of that. So it is one of the high margin business for Fino. And there are multiple growth levers in terms of in increasing the partner count, increasing the uh, you know, transaction size and all of that, which you can see. So they can have more transaction also. They can have more ticket size also. So this business has multiple levers. And if we see, this is how Fino has grown. In fact, you can see there is a 204% CAGR growth rate, which is happening. And these are the numbers for Fino uh, in terms of revenue. 2021, they did 32 crore. 22, they did 58 crore. And this has come with multiple levers firing. If you see the throughput, the throughput has increased. The client count has increased. If you see the throughput per client, that means how much they are uh, collecting from each client. It has per client basis, it has gone from 45 crore per client to 182 crore per client. And if you see throughput per transactions, like how much uh, you know uh, they're charging, so that number is here, uh, which is in each transaction, how many transactions they are doing, and in each transaction, how much they're collecting, which is almost 28 uh, point. 28 crore, 28 lakh, and this is also growing. So now per transaction, earlier if they were collecting in one transaction, collecting 13 lakhs, now they are collecting 39 lakhs. So you can see there are different levers firing and why again I'm highlighting, I'm giving you all the nuances so that if business is doing well or a business is not doing well, we need to find out why it is happening. And through this, you will be able to identify whether they are having a constraint on the client count or they are starting, their client is not contributing that much and all of that. And if you see take rate, it's on decline because again, there is a lot of competition, uh, but uh, Fino has grown well from 1% to 7% market share. And this business is also expected to show decent growth rate in terms of market size opportunities. The third and the most interesting part is Casa because this is very, very sticky and customers, they are renewing and Casa is basically your basic banking facility where, you know, customer approaches the merchant and then through merchant portal, uh, they open a bank account where uh, the customer can have a deposit account. They can have banking facility, debit card and all only lending is not provided and customer needs to pay a subscription fee in advance. Uh, I don't recollect the exact amount, but somewhere between 200 to 400 rupee. And then that's a fixed amount that uh, by which customer uh, does all the banking facilities for the year. And then every year the customer renews and then there is a renewal fee. So if you see the way it has grown and this is like a sticky customer because it becomes your you know bank customer. And uh, if you see uh, the growth rate, uh, the growth rate has been very good. So uh, it starts from the people who are coming for various banking facility without having an account. And almost every month, you know, gets two crore of population who comes from various banking facility. And from that two crore, they are able to convert almost five lakh, 10 lakh, 20 lakh accounts and they have opened. So 22 FY22, 20 lakhs account they were able to convert. And if you see from 14 lakh to 25 lakh to now, they have totally 45 lakh accounts open. 
and you have a new subscription fee and renewal fee so anybody who is coming new so next year all this 45 lakh almost 75 to 78 percent are going to renew if the historical renewal rate is there so this is your annuity income which will keep growing and the more they can grow new accounts this will keep on growing and also a reflection of how much these customers are spending on the debit card which is increasing uh, per transaction increasing which says the customers are sticky and they're growing and hence their chance of you know also growing along with them so a lot of interesting data we need to look in terms of what is the new revenue what is the renewal revenue and some other revenue which i believe is coming from the debit card transactions and look at the growth from nowhere 59 crore 121 crore and if even if instead of 70 percent growth even if it grows at 25 percent first the renewal revenue itself will go up from 28 crore to 40 45 crore and this will go up uh, plus the transaction base so you know this can again grow up and it is again a sticky highly important high margin business which is growing and again if you look in terms of the new account uh you know uh casa so this is the kind of amount which you know is charging like 319 rupees for every new account casa account and if you see the renewal account it is almost around 109 rupees so again, you can look at all the numbers and you can see the kind of growth rate Fino is having 161%, 103%. Uh, the transaction amount also, if you see decent transaction amount, it has gone. So debit card transaction throughput is growing uh, from 1500, 2100, 3900 per transaction throughput is growing per card, per CASA account throughput is growing. And uh, mostly almost 80 to 90% of CASA accounts, they are using the debit card. And uh, Fino is able to convert 75% of the customer. And in India, in rural urban, 6 to 8%, the debit, uh, you know, deposit growth rate is there. And this is the data on how much banking accounts are penetrated and all of that. Basically, Fino operates in areas where, you know, the banking facility is not available in, you know, two, three kilometers. So still, you can see there is a 40, 45% market where it is not available and, you know, which is the cashment area. The next is micro ATM. Think it like any other ATM facility, but then are the ATMs which we use in Metro, they're big ATMs, higher cost. Uh, in rural areas, the economic feasibility is not there. So that is where they use a very, very small and cheaper device called micro ATM or AEPS, which is used for withdrawing money. And again, customer goes to the merchant and they can do all this transaction and get that money. And again, if we look at throughput, so this is a business which has become a bit stagnant, not growing at that high level, which is again, you know, reflected in the revenue number. Uh, and again, this is through again, your, there is a own channel and there is an open banking channel and uh, you can see all of that. But this business, of course, is, is giving a revenue around 180, one, uh, 183 crore. But this is right now stagnant, not growing with that high rate. But it gives them avenues to connect with the, you know, uh, probable customer who can be converted into a CASA account, a debit card account, and then they can earn high income. So think it like a platform. There is a lot of cross-selling, upselling opportunities are there. Conversion opportunities are there. And the reason for, you know, these micro ATM potential is because in India, the ATM penetration is very low because financially it is not feasible. And uh, in rural area, still, you know, two-third of households are in rural area where, you know, the banking facilities may not be available within, you know, one or two kilometers. Then there are a lot of other uh, products like the traditional BC banking, which is business correspondent banking, where for a lot of banks, ICICI, Andhra Bank, they provide banking, you know, BC facilities like, you know, Alhar enabling facilities and all of that. And then they're doing a lot of cross-selling in terms of personal loan, gold loan, insurance, and all of that. So this gives you idea of each and every product in which Fino is operating. What is the kind of opportunity Fino has? What is the kind of revenue it is generating? So now given you understand all this operation and all the revenue sources, now let us get into financials. So these are all operational numbers just to give you a hint of how Fino is growing in terms of remittance, in terms of micro ATMs. Uh, you know, this is all, you know, throughput number uh, per uh, per per unit throughput number, like micro ATM you have seen from uh, 3,500 rupee to 3,600, 3,700, uh, you know, the APS, the CMS. So it tells you all the numbers which are growing in a decent way. If you look at the merchant count here or growth rate, 50% increase in merchant count. 
and now as i said they have almost 10 lakh merchant accounts from 6 lakh when they came with the ipo and this is the blended uh, take rate so you saw some products have 0.25% take rate some have 0.85% so this is the blended take rate excluding the upi throughput because uh, upi they don't earn much uh, but again uh, debit card facility loan referral so all of this is growing and then if we convert into financials how the financials have grown so almost from a you know a 600 some crore business now this is almost a 1000 crore business if you add all of this you will get almost 1900 crore in 2021 and this is the distribution where micro atms uh, and aeps that is almost 27% uh, the remittance it's uh, you know this business slowly it's uh, reducing its market share because the cash management and casa they are growing so if you see cash management from 2% to 6% and casa has grown from 5% to 12% and then BC banking is still, you know, uh, stable and others are, you know, uh, they're trying to grow. So micro ATM remittance, they are a low growing business. BC banking is a traditional one. Cash management and CASA, this is the high growing segment. And uh, there is one more thing. If you look in terms of now, you know, what is a transaction revenue source and what is a subscription revenue source? So if you see the income breakup, 42% uh, of the income comes from subscription. There are two parts one which they charge to the customer when the customer opens a casa account and second they charge to the merchant when the merchant tries to get into a micro atm uh, facility so decent distribution and then in terms of own channel versus open banking channel uh, still the own banking channel generates 65 percent of the revenue now if we look in terms of pnl and operating leverage possibility so as i said they went from almost 350 crore to 770 crore uh, revenue in 21 and now 1000 crore revenue and then these are the breakups so if we look at the key items uh, uh, you will have uh, right now other expenses as the bulk of item 539 crore which is almost 70 percent but this is the breakup of other expenses like the business correspondence expenses uh, some banking switching fee consultancy charges a welcome letter kit and all of that so when we break it we will see uh, first the income has uh, is growing at a decent pace and then out of that income 20 percent of the income is the employee expense i'm just giving idea because how the you know operating leverage can play and what are the variable expenses and you will see there's a slide which talks about the revenue generated per unit employee and which is increasing so uh, employee cost will not, even if they grow at 20, 30%, employee cost will not be expected to grow at 20, 30%, maybe lesser. Uh, then the rent and all, they're a smaller part. The bigger part is this BC and merchant commission, which is a variable cost. So as they will grow, this cost will also go up. Uh, if you see the NPCI switching fee consultancy charges. So this is the, uh, this data revenue share is what is the total percentage of revenue this expense item is. So you can see. 54% and 20% is too big. Uh, then your depreciation is there apart from expenses, communication expenses is there, consultancy charges is there, some other fees there. And this says at what rate it has grown. So this has grown at 153% and then only 6%. This has grown at 119%, 5%. Against your top line, which grew at 86% and 20, they didn't grow because remittance was a key business which suffered. So this gives you some idea of how to track the PNL, you know, how they will play out. And of course, it also depends on uh, how they're spending money in future and if you look through the recent con call now they want to build the next stage of you know banking for themselves where they plan to do some investments and all so that needs to be seen but still the guidance is they will be able to manage this kind of profit margin and the growth expectation is around 20 percent plus but you have the idea of major expense variable employee productivity is important how they manage cost efficiency like managing the consulting charges subscription fee you know staff welfare bank charges and then you know do some kind of margin lift and how this bc and merchant commission this is the key in terms of how the overall margins will evolve so now let us go to the risk and if we see the risk first risk is it's a new and unproven business that itself is a big risk because you know when the management goes through five six of history we know if they are honest they will treat the minority shareholders well <laughs> And I am very, very cautious on new kind of businesses. So even though we study a lot of business, I may not take a big position because, you know, you don't know what kind of risks might come and these are unproven management. So the better way I see is let them prove themselves. And, you know, if everything is good, 
uh, there is nothing bad in accumulating it over a period of time. That is how I do. So I consider this as a very big risk. The other risk is on the margin. We don't know what is the margin history. We don't know the margin cyclicity. So when we have a history, it becomes easier to identify those risks. And if we don't know those risks, the you know when times turn, the damage could be higher. Second is big boys can kill. So if you saw Airtel has a payment bank license, and even though we know Airtel only for telecommunication, Airtel is doing a lot of good work on the payment banking side. And there is a presentation on Airtel talking about it's a 190 slide presentation. And there are eight, nine slides dedicated to the payment bank. Go through those slides. And because Airtel is there with each and every Kirana shop by for selling SIM cards, it is very, very easy for them to you know penetrate that market and kill. So this is a big, big risk we need to see. And this year, Airtel has also crossed thousand crore revenue, and they have also become uh, you know profitable. And Airtel has much more wider product base. Like you know, they can provide banking, they can provide apps, they can provide entertainment, they can provide SIM cards. So they can have a better ability to cross sell. So we need to really monitor how you know uh, Fino can evolve against Airtel. And Jio also has a payment bank license, but Jio has not done much. And India Post is not doing much here. And pay ATM, they operate in a different customer segment, so they don't directly compete. But Airtel is something we need to keep a close watch. And also in Jio, in case they get aggressive in this market. And some businesses, they, I am expecting them to degrow with time. Like as India gets, you know, more and more educated, and you know, people can know how to, you know. Uh, work on the apps themselves, why they will need to go to a merchant and then, you know, ask for remittance. So Fino also understands all this and that is why, you know, they have an app for the customer directly. They are trying to tap the, you know, Casa account, make sticky customers. But I expect right now, if you see next three, four years, the data says there is a Crystal report, 160 page report on all these banking needs uh, that's available on Fino website. You can go through it. So still the remittance market is expected to grow at 11, 12% and Fino is getting into, you know, more new kind of remittance markets, international remittance market, the South Kerala model and all. But uh, after four or five years, you know, this market could stagnate and I won't be surprised if it starts, you know, decreasing. Uh, then it's a cash business. So if you know the cash management system or merchant, there is a lot of cash handling. And when a lot of cash handling happens, there are three, four different kinds of risk emerge. One in terms of accounting and all, there is a scope of, you know, doing some kind of gochi. So again, I'm just trying to be cautious and highlight all the risks possible. Second, there could be instances of fraud where merchants itself, they do some kind of fraud and you hear about banking fraud. Third, because of cash transition, there is a lot of security risk and, uh, you know, I don't know how much of, of course, they spend on insurance, but, you know, these kind of things can have an impact on the brand and a lot of other things. So we need to, you know, uh, be cognizant of these risks. And last, uh, the stock has fallen post IPO from 550 rupee to almost 240 rupee. Uh, two months back, it did a bounce from 240, but it still looks like a downtrend bounce. So still chart is not showing any kind of bullish pattern. So we need to be aware of all of this and businesses dynamic, you know, some of these things could really, you know, destroy the whole business model. We need to be cognizant and track all of this, track the growth numbers and then take a call. And last valuation. So the company after falling 50, 60% is available at 2000 crore market cap and the profit from almost 20 crore, the profit has grown to 40 crore. And if you see the current run rate, our uh, last quarter, the company did 18 crore of revenue. So even if we don't assume any growth, let us say the growth is zero. Uh, if we assume no cyclicity and they can do this, uh, you know, 18 crore, it converts into almost a 72 crore of annual pack. And it's uh, seven. I mean, this is all collection business with T plus two, T plus three settlement. So I assume, you know, this pure cash profit, which means the business is almost available at 30 times earning. So this is the nature of valuation. And if we look at summarizing all the estimated growth, so now this is the summary, your cash management, 6% of the prof, uh, you know, revenue, it's a commission and transaction model, 0.24% take rate, the key metric, which we need to track it. What is the take rate? Is it rising? Is it falling? What is the client count? Is it rising? How much throughput they're generating per client? How much throughput they're generating per transaction? This will help you to understand how the business is growing. What is driving the business? If it is not growing, where the pain area is, why that pain area is. 
So the insights are it is growing due to high client growth rate, high throughput per client, high throughput per transaction, but the take rate is falling. Maybe they are compromising because of competition and still, you know, they're able to grow and they have grown the market share from 1% to 7% with a 103% CAGR growth rate in two years. And this is a high growth, high margin business. So likewise, I have given you numbers for all of them, but CMS is a high growing business, high margin business. Uh, Casa and debit card, which is a subscription based model. This is another high growing, high margin business. And together they are 18%, which I will not be surprised if in next two years from 18%, this becomes almost 30% of the revenue contribution. And the other one, some of them are, you know, stable businesses. Some of them are growing in 10% expected to grow. So others is ex growing at 21%. Uh, and they are launching a lot of more new products for cross-sell and upsell. BC banking, they don't talk much and they are generating same kind of revenue. Uh, remittance is something which the market is growing at 14% and they had a bad year because of COVID. But let's see how, if they are able to grow at even 10, 12%. And micro ATM and AEPS, this market is expected. Actually, AEPS market is expected to grow at 25, you know, 29%. So let us see how much they can grow if they are able to grow even at, uh, you know, historically they have grown at 41%, but let's see how AEPS market. So AEPS is basically can might cannibalize also the micro ATM market. So we need to see it together, but this is how the overall numbers are. So we need to factor all of this. And uh, Fino also says that, you know, they are, uh, you know, their growth products are CASA and uh, cash management, matured products are, you know, the remittance and, uh, you know, micro ATM. And then they're launching new products like the referral products in terms of insurance and international remittance and all. And then they want to get into digital journey and penetrate customers more, open more CASA accounts and all of that. So with this, you have fair idea of your, uh, you know, growth numbers and valuation. Uh, those who are uh, sub, uh, scientific investing, you know, uh, practitioner members, they will get us specific Excel in their LMS where all these numbers will try to build it and will build the forecast, you know, all those numbers, but this is how we should approach the valuation. So this was all about, uh, you know, Fino. I hope you liked the video. You understood the business. It's important to track it. And if you liked it, uh, you know, do like our uh, video, do subscribe to our channel. If you have not subscribed and uh, uh, press the bell icon so that you get all the updates and uh, help to share this video so that it reaches to more and more people. And I will see you soon with another video, which is around the auto sector, because uh, I have gone through 10, 15 con calls, some reports, a lot of interesting things are happening. Some people are telling that auto will turn around. Some are telling still there's a lot of pain. So we'll see, uh, you know, uh, how the auto industry is shaping up. Thank you.